Quickly, my next guest is a social media commentator who is now a social media sensation as he gives his voice and lends his voice to the voiceless and comments on issues that matter not just to him but to a lot of people. Without further ado, um, joining me from Abuja is the very black dark man, Martins Ose. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Mr. You can never be me. <laughs> Right, I can see that you do your research very well. Um, let's just jump right into it. Um, in, in the last three months, you have just sort of become this enigma. And even when people don't follow you, they'll definitely see you on their timeline because you are constantly commenting on a particular issue. Um, why do you care so much? OK, first of all, before I answer, yeah, um, to the people criticizing me and my singlets, because since I started talking online, people pick on me for my singlets. I want you to know that my singlets go to national TV before you. Thank you very much, Sir Tamo Yemoli. All right, so um, please, can you repeat the question? Thank you. The question is, why do you care so much about certain societal issues? Why do you lend your voice? Well, I care because, first of all, it is my duty as a Nigerian to be to not leave the whole responsibility for the government to fix, to also try my own possible best in order to make Nigeria a better place for not just me, also for my future. So that is why I try so hard to give my opinion about a lot of things. So you came into limelight because you were running commentary on a particular issue uh, that involved a particular skincare brand and of course eventually other skincare brands um and a particular this individual said that the skincare brand hurts and destroyed her skin and only to come out to apologize much later uh, to this particular skincare, skincare brand uh, how did that make you feel knowing that even the people that you were fighting for the individual that you were fighting for uh, made a u-turn Well, at the end of the day, um, I didn't feel really bad, first of all, because it, it was not really about that particular person. It was about the general public, you know. However, the person made me um, go into the whole thing, you know. But since the person, when the person said, oh, apologize, when the person was supposed to also join me to stand up for what is right, you know, at the end of the day, you understand, something like this is... Um, people it's not everybody that have the mindset you know it's not everybody that have the courage to actually stand up for what is right so immediately the person just said oh i'm apologizing i don't want to all i just said okay so, but i didn't really feel pain because it's about the general public at the end of the day all right um like i said you lend your voice to a lot of issues i i, I want to tackle those issues in particular now there was a particular video that you made you were reacting to what toke makinwa and bobriski said about you know women and how they should deal with married men why did you take up that particular matter well first of all um i took up that particular matter because this generation are obsessed with a lot of celebrities and then they don't think for themselves so when those two people were giving the advice i was like wait what you know there are some people that are not even meant to be on television i'm sorry to say no offense but then again it's the society we live in today that encourages people like that so when i heard it i knew a lot of people were going to take this advice that was why i quickly reacted to it because like i said it's about the general public and for the future you understand because if we start taking um advice from everybody that is on tv trust me tomorrow we won't have it tomorrow at the end of the day don't play all right very dark man um you are beginning to redefine what social consciousness is all about how far are you willing to go uh, because, you know, from the trajectory that we've seen, sometimes people start off really strong and it, lose, it looks like they lose steam along the way. How far are you willing to take this activism? Well, I'm going to be staying long because everything they would use to come for me, I've already put it out there. I told them I, I am coming with a tarnished image, you know, like literally everything. I told them I am broke. I don't have money. I'm not a rich person, so they cannot broke shame me. 
I've told them a lot of things about my life that they cannot even use to attack me. So basically, I prepared myself mentally for them. So all the bah, boh, lash, blah, 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 blah. When I hear them, I'm like, oh, well, I've already told you before I'm broke, you know? Because in Nigeria, what they do is, in order to bring down your mentality and to bring down your morale for fighting, they will say, ah, no go find money. Your mates, they find money. No go find money. This so the best thing they do is to broke shame you. You know, so that was how I came. And then sometimes I won't show my one room apartment where I stay. I show them everything. I'm like, oh, yes, I'm broke. So what else? You know, but then again, they'll still come with something like, you talk too much, you talk too much, you talk too much. Now, one thing I'll say is I realize I'm doing something right when they cannot pin anything on me other than you talk too much. Do you understand? <laughs> so that's it. This thing will still be there for a very long time. Now, can you take me through your investigation process? So before you take up a particular matter, because most often than not, you, you bring out receipts. So can you take me through your investigation process? How far do you go to actually discover whether this particular individual or this particular brand is doing something they're not supposed to be doing? How far do you take your investigations? Well, if I tell you, a lot of them will be cautious. So it will really mess up my investigation when I actually have a target, you know, because I really go, when I mean I go deep, I really go deep on the person and I take my time for like two or three days. I will go like maybe like 2 a.m. when everybody's sleeping, I'll start searching and asking and doing this. So I'll go to social media and everywhere to make sure I get what I want. Google, I'll like even Google sometimes, use YouTube, you know, to actually pin my target and to be able to bring that receipt. So I don't... From but I can't tell you all about how I do my investigation else. My my meat, we leave the hunter strap. All right, let's talk about the influencer culture. Um, most often than not, we've seen you call out certain celebrities for quote unquote misleading their followers, you know, and misusing their influence. Um, uh, how important is it for people to actually do their due diligence uh, before buying a product or engaging in a particular service as opposed to just believing what a celebrity says? Um, mm. First of all, you know this Nigeria, eh? sometimes when I look at the list of people that are called celebrities, I ask myself that, is a celebrity supposed to mean somebody that is celebrate? Like, what is about this person that people celebrate? And then you look at the person's followers list, you'll be like, ah, this person like this, where they do, <laughs> where they do shake and shake and I get all this amount of followers, you know? So, but then again, um, talking about how to really tackle the problem, I didn't get the question well, but I'll just flow with it. Mm. I mean, one thing I would say is, I always say this thing, I said, okay, go on, go on, please, let me hear the question again, please. Thank so the you. question is, for the individual that wants to patronize a particular service or wants to buy a particular product, uh, how would you tell that individual to do their due diligence in terms of conducting research or what steps are they supposed to take to confirm the authenticity of the product as opposed to just believing the word of mouth of a particular celebrity? Okay, so um, let me start with skincare because skincare is like the main one. Uh, for skincare, first of all, the NAFDAQ number, um, you have to make sure the NAFDAQ number is on the product. However, however, NAFDAQ number does not entirely mean that the product is good, but it means that the right authorities have actually checked the content of the product. Secondly, um, some people can actually use a fake NAFDAQ product on their brand but the way you catch them to know that the product is fake or not fake, check the list, like the ingredient that is used to make the product. Most of them don't put the ingredient that they use in making the product because they themselves don't actually know the ingredients in the product. Some although those people will just mix things. But you know Nigerians don't really care. Nigerians does, they, they take words, they take um, advert from mouth, you know. They take out from my be like, oh, now this thing now they make me glow. Oh, now this thing now they make me glow. You know, that's the only thing they check. Not knowing that, okay, if you, you have to do your own personal research because then again, these people don't list out the ingredients and the products. You, where you won't go use the products. Do you understand? You won't go use the products. There are some things that you need to read so that you know if this thing that you are reading is okay for your own skin. But again, Nigerians take words from us. That is why most of them, I really like buying what the celebrities are telling them, knowing fully well, because I am pretty certain, I've done my research on some celebrities, the product they advertise, they don't use them. 
but that's their business. I am not against them advertising, but you see for skincare that people use, skincare especially because of skin cancer, kidney problems, come on man, you should, you should be authentic to advertise things like that. That's all. So the measures are look for the NAVDAC number, check for the ingredients. The very dark man. Um, to be honest, we've seen a lot of people that are against you. Your pages, your social media pages, they keep bringing it down. And, you know, like you would always say, you make the content, the content does not make you. You always find a way to, like, come back up. But why do you think there's such opposition against you and your brand? Um... I think it's because Nigerians are not used to somebody that looks scattered and is saying something right. I think I think so. So um, for some reason, they feel like it's only the government that is meant to fix things. Do you understand? So when an individual is trying to do it, they are surprised. They are not used to it. So they'll try to bring you down. So they fix into that normal normal thing where nobody's doing anything about it do you understand even if you're doing something good they still want to bring you down because they are not used to it so but then again like i said no matter how they bring my page down i make the content the contents don't make me so they can never bring me down only god can bring me down you know the vibe don't play <laughs> well you always say that um eventually that this is going to evolve into something much more bigger because it looks like your scope or your niche right now is just uh, maybe skincare and some other issues. Uh, are we going to see you in time move into like full activism, uh, maybe calling out bad politicians and, you know, bad governance? Okay, so for now, I want to do, uh, deal with, okay, so my NGO, I'm putting up an NGO, and it's coming up soon because that will give me like a legal stand to actually go after these people properly the way I want. You understand? Um, it's not only the skincare sector I'm focusing on, to be very honest. Me, I want to try my best to clean up the online market, especially, you know, this issue where you pay a vendor online, you pay a vendor for things, the vendor will not deliver the products or what I ordered versus what I got. And you try to complain because the vendor has a bigger platform than the customer. The customer will try to reach out to them. Some vendors even go as far as blocking the customers after they collect their money. I've tried my best. I've sold like two right now. I've sold like two from hair vendor and the clothes vendor. However, the clothes vendor lady, she was running courses on me. The only thing I did was I checked my skin. The whole insult she did did not pull out hair. I didn't have a day of fever. So I was like, okay, so the only thing she has is to insult. So basically, I will have an NGO that we do a lot of things. Um, um, child abuse, um, a lot of things. There are a list yeah. of them, you know. So it's not only, but for politics, I won't talk about politicians. My reason is because politics is actually big before they go. Okay. All right, the very dark man. I think now it's time for us to really get personal. You know, you, seemed, you seem very content with what you have, which is really good. You have made contentment seem cool, you know, all over again. And a lot of people are just really wondering, um, when you're not dedicating your time to the things that matter to you online, what are you doing? Like, what's, what's, tell us more about yourself in terms of what you do for a living, apart from being a social commentator. What I do for a living, um, I'm a professional optician. I do dreadlocks. So I have people, I go to their houses to do dreadlocks for them. Also, I have one or two small, small low-key businesses when it comes to like transportation. So people run like all those tricycle things, bring some funds for me, you know, small, small money like that. Mm -hmm. Then um, when it comes to my play lifestyle, the only thing I do, the only thing I enjoy is going to the gym. Going to the gym, basically, I don't smoke. I don't drink, I don't like parties, I don't like clubs, I don't do nothing like that. So that is why I'm 100% focused on this course to make sure I do something worthwhile with my time before I grow old and I cannot do anything again. Yeah, I also noticed that you're multilingual. Can you tell me uh, sort of your digital foot, your geographical foot map, where you're from, how do you speak so many languages, how did you end up in Abuja? We're running out of time, but uh, I'm pretty sure you can find a way to compress all of that information. 
Okay. Um, okay, so so when my multilingual comes out when I'm ready to like when I'm peace or when I'm ready to like insult people. But then again, I'm from Edo State. I'm from Edo State. I was born in Abuja. I stayed in Kaduna in my house. My mom speaks Yoruba. We are both my mom and my dad are actually Edo, but my mom speaks fluent Yoruba. So sometimes she speaks Yoruba and I picked it. Then I stay with a lot of northern people northern people are like one of the most amazing people in nigeria don't play uh, for real for real northern people are amazing i think they actually taught me how to be contented with whatever i have because it's only in the north where you see an analogy with plenty of money you'll be walking on the street and you'll not know because he values life more than money money is not life to them they value other things they value culture they value religion they value a lot of things other than money so i learned how to from them i learned how to be contented from them then from the Igbo side, the Igbo people, the way they do their business, you know, a lot of things about them, how they like to chop life, how they like to spend, how they like to treat their woman right, you know. And then to the Yoruba people, the mentality, their educational level, Yoruba people like to be learned, they like to like speak well, you know, a lot of, a lot of, I just looked at a lot of culture and I was like, yeah. But the one I learned from my own place, Edo people will know the year. I learned Garagara and stubbornness from them. They have other qualities, yeah, but I learned Garagara and the Garagara is helping me fight. All right, the very dark man, we would definitely love to have you back. Uh, we had a little bit of a setback today. We'd definitely love to have you back so we can talk more on personal issues and also on the course that you're pursuing. Thank you so very much for coming on Robin Minds. Don't just stand and teasing me. Now it's time to show.